All right everyone, welcome to the Ruby League History Channel. Hope you're all well. Tonight I'm going to be doing my 2021 Parramatta Reels preview. So as you can tell by the get up and the kit that I'm wearing, I'm a Parramatta supporter. I did a 2020 preview last year. I've decided to carry on in the 2021 and do a preview for this year. So as you can tell, I got me Parramatta shirt on from 2017. Still fits, that's good. I got me scarf. I don't have a Parramatta hat. If someone wants to buy me a Parramatta hat, and when I mean that, a beanie, that would be much appreciated. I'm not going to pay for postage, just joking, but if someone wants, wants to buy me a beanie out there, that would be smashing. Then I'd have the full kit, and um, I'd be able to do some videos in it. So getting into the 2021 season, there's a lot of expectation on Parramatta to once again meet the finals. And to not only meet the finals, but to actually do something in the finals. Going quickly back to 2020, they exceeded my expectations in 2020. Coming third, I didn't expect Parramatta to finish that high. The first half of the year was great, second half of the year was shite. Um, and once again, we kind of meekly went out in the finals, capitulated in both games against Melbourne and South. Very disappointing way to end the year, but um, as, as they say, we're going into 2021, so with the signings, I already did a video on the signings. If you want to know my thoughts on that, there's, there's a link in the description below. I'll add that video. Going into the uh, actual draw, though, looking at it, it's going to be a tough draw. We play a couple of teams that finished in the finals last year twice. And we also play a couple of teams that finished towards the bottom twice. So in the first five rounds to kick off the year, I think it's a... Uh, Relatively easy way to start the year. We kick off against Brisbane, the wooden spoonless from last year. It's going to be a tricky match because most clubs that finish with the wooden spoon, generally the next year they win their first game. Then we play against Melbourne, defending Premiers, and then we play against Cronulla, West and St George. So not a bad start to the year. But in the last seven to eight games of the year, coming home, it's going to be, be a very tough run coming home into the finals if we are in contention by that stage. So we play Cambry, Sydney Roosters, South, Manly, North Queensland, Melbourne and Penrith. So quite a tough run home there. And if we are in contention for the finals by that stage, it would be a good barometer to see actually where the club's going to be headed into the finals. Um, some key players that I think are very important in the Parramatta team in 2021. Obviously, Clint Gutherson, I think if Clint Gutherson wasn't there in 2020, the club wouldn't have made the top four and might have been struggling to make the top eight. I think there was a couple of games that he won pretty much single-handedly. Dylan Brown is also an another massive um, a player that we're going to need in 2021. He does a lot on the field. He's a great attacking player and um, he's a player that's going to be leading us into the future. Obviously, some people in the forward pack as well, Regan Campbell-Gillard, Paolo, those type of players are going to be very important in regards to where Paramount are finishing the year. Um, I think the spine that we have is quite good. Gutherson at fullback, Dylan Brown at 5'8", Mitchell Moses at halfback and Reid Marnie at number 9, dummy half. I think it's a very good spine. I think it's better than some of the other spines in the competition. Not the greatest spine, but definitely up there. The games that I'm looking forward to most myself i know everyone's going to have a different list but the games i'm looking forward to the most are both the matches against our tribals canary bankstown round eight and round 15 and i'm also looking forward to playing against eastern suburbs at the city creek ground in round 20. this is going to be the first time that we're going to be playing at the city creek ground since april the 30th 2006 when we played against manly some of the concerns that i have for 2021, which were obvious in 2020, are the edge defence. So for the first half of the year, the defence was all right. And then all of a sudden, all it took for teams to un unlock our defence was to shift the ball once or twice to the left or right. And people would just fly down either edge, especially down Wong and Blake's edge. I, I thought that every single time that the attacking team went down his edge. He didn't know what to do when he was out of place, which put Ferguson out of place. And then the other other side of the field, you had Simo that was constantly racing up all the time. 
and he had gems that was kind of caught in no man's land because of what Sybil was doing. So I hope in the off season Brad Arthur has weight tenfold on the edge defence because once again there's going to be teams that are going to be looking at old video teams from 2020 and they're going to be testing the defence. They're going to be testing the edge defence. Another concern is winning away from home. We're agreed at home, but we seem to drop a lot of points away from home. So I'm pretty sure we're, all the players know, Brad Arthur knows, that they're not the greatest team away from home. But if they can fix that, that'll definitely mean that we will possibly qualify for the finals. So the prediction for Parramatta in 2021 is I think that we'll come sixth on the table. I don't think that we'll finish top four this year. What I want to see is if we do meet the finals, is I want to see improvement in the finals. So I don't want to see the club play in the first week and get knocked out straight away or win the first match, play against the team in the semi final and get bundled out or play like a Jekyll and Hyde performance like we did in 2019. We beat Brisbane 58 now, played against Melbourne the next week and lost 32 now. I think Parramatta is the only team that I can think of that can do that in the finals one week and then be the complete opposite the next week. Um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. And it seems the last couple of years, Parramatta get to the finals, they put themselves in a good position and they get bundled out straight away. We're starting to become a club that has a reputation of I remember a while ago we had a reputation of being cellar dwellers, a club that struggles, poor recruitment, off-field problems. And now we're kind of a club that we've solved all that. But when it comes to the finals, we're a club that... I see people on Facebook, I see people on Instagram. Even before the finals last year, Paramount will go out and street sets. They're chokers. They won't be able to handle the pressure. And they were right. So... I want to see some improvement in the finals. I want to see this club, if they do meet the finals, meet the preliminary final or even try to push towards the grand final. I don't want to see the club get out to a good lead in, in the finals match and capitulate once again. So if you have a look on the table, as I just said, I got this ladder by the way. Um, my fiancée sent this to me. But if you see on the ladder there, we're coming sixth this year. That's my prediction for Power Matter. In 2021 and um, if we don't meet the finals or if we we don't play well in the finals do I see Brad Arthur getting terminated and um, I'm not too sure about that because some th there's two camps with Paramount you get a lot of fans that see sack Brad Arthur and you get a lot of fans that see keep Brad Arthur and the ones that see keep Brad Arthur have said okay if you're gonna sack Brad Arthur who are you gonna replace him with and the people on the sack Brad Arthur camp don't have an answer to that. And I don't have an answer to that as well. Who's on the market if Brad Arthur gets sacked as the, as the coach? I don't know who would come in and replace him. Brad Arthur's been through a lot of shape with this club. He's been through thick and thin. And I'm pretty sure no matter what happens in 2021, I think he'll be the coach in 2022. Um, I think though the player coming into pressure the most in 2021 at Parramatta is definitely Mitchell Moses. I think um, if he doesn't have a good year personally, this could be his final year at the club. Um, me personally, I think as long as Mitchell Moses is the Parramatta halfback, you can sort of put a red line through Parramatta's, uh, Parramatta's potential of actually getting the grand final day and winning the premiership. He's, he's a halfback that can get you there, but can he get you to the next step? I don't think so. But anyway, that's me, Parramatta Eels preview for 2021. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm getting close to 750. And if you've got some spare time, check out me Instagram and Facebook pages. Anyways, everyone, I'm going to get out of here. This is Ruby League History. And I'll catch us all later in the next video. All right, tatty bye now.